Hello my fellow Americans, Canucks, and our international viewing audience. I'm Tim Martini and on this segment of Exploring the Obscure, we are going to interview 2016 presidential candidate Vermin Supreme. Vermin is running for US president and his campaign promises include ponies for all Americans, mandatory toothbrushing, he's gonna fight ISIS by going back in time, and he wears a boot on his head. And for that reason, I'm dressed appropriately with my no duck face shirt. So uh, how many times have you been running for U.S. President? Well, that's a contestable and debatable issue. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, essentially, I've been running for something since uh, 1988. Um, I've been utilizing the New Hampshire primary process up, uh, since 1992. Now, once again, of course, um, I was running for very imaginary uh, 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 positions. I was running for mayor of the Eastern Seaboard, then mayor of uh, America, then mayor of the Lower 48, uh, then emperor of the New Millennium. Um, so there's all these uh, things, but once again, I found out that simply describing these uh, offices which I was seeking was taking up too much time. They were taking away the talking points of zombies, ponies, etc. And so I eventually settled just to say, yes, I'm running for president of America. I guess that was around 2004. So what's with the boot? Why do you wear the boot on your head? Well, my flippant answer uh, primarily is it stands for all that is good in America. Now, of course, that's just a canned response, but the reality is, is that it's a signifier, uh, it's, a, it's a visual clue that uh, if I'm approaching, uh, you should be prepared to not necessarily receive a, a linear message, shall we say. Um, essentially, if you take my photograph in a large crowd of people and you showed it to any child and ask them, what's wrong with this picture, they are going to very easily point to the guy with the boot on his head. But it's the sheer height of it that uh, Peg and Kennedy point this out. When I enter a room, it is a very, it's the tallest thing in everybody the room, knows essentially. Her. Everybody knows uh, her Everybody her. knows, and it's a media magnet. They're, they're like, what is up with that? Now, in fact, uh, last campaign, when people would ask me what, what the boot was, I would say, the boot is a pile of shit, and the flies are the media. And uh, essentially, so you, you made a lot of friends that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it was, it was, it was that's the analysis essentially. I mean, it, it, it's 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 like a, a shiny uh, worm, a plastic worm to the trout. You know, it's it's, it's going to draw them in. And just by wearing this boot and uh, having my uh, rather whimsical platform planks, uh, it's really drawn more attention than pretty much any other candidate uh, this side of these nuts, maybe. Now, do you prefer rubber? over leather or? Uh, I've always uh, worn the rubber boots, uh, indeed, uh, more the Wellington. Uh, but uh, it's it's lightweight, it's uh, flexible, um, and it does all these wonderful things that are uh, somewhat amusing. You, know, oh, 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 oh. you can now just shoot a little B-roll and mm, ask me a question and I'm, I'm nodding yes. And it's a, so it's, it's really nice the, the way it fits on there. It's, it's, it's loops, but it's tight. And uh, what size is it? Uh, this particular, it's giant. Giant, okay, good. Giant. Now, one of the other questions, um, Amy Shiraz, she wants to know... Uh, hi, Amy. Hi, hi, Amy. She wants to know when uh, when will she get her pony? Uh, once again, uh, the, the pony thing is essentially upon my election. Uh, that's when I'll be able to deliver the ponies to you, the American public. Um, but perhaps you may want to check your mailbox. Uh, we, I, we have sent out several early ones, uh, so if you haven't received your pony, America, uh, please uh, ask your postal carrier if they've uh, seen your pony. Uh, your pony is in the mail. Your pony will be coming to you shortly. Thank you very much. I'm Vermin Supreme. Now, going back to the boot. Yes, the boot. What's it all a boot, as you Canadians might say? That's yes. <laughs> now, uh, Eric Gibson, he would like to know. Hey, Eric. Do you wear your boot? Is it a right-footed boot, left-footed boot? And does that kind of represent you leaning towards one party or the other? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, uh, I have run as a Democrat and a Republican. Um, I am either a dino or a rhino. It is a name only. It is a flag of convenience uh, that I seize upon. Uh, it's a very uh, strategic decision. Uh, it was a very tough decision. It always is. I sort of like being mixed in with the Republican uh, crew. But when I look at the ballot, I, th I have a much better chance on the Democratic side. I also believe that disaffected Democrats are more likely to vote for me. Now, one of your campaign promises is that if you get elected, everybody gets a pony. A free pony. A free, okay, so that was one of the questions. It is a free pony. It's an absolutely free pony, no cost to you. Okay. And once again, of course, it is a federal pony identification system. You must have your pony with you at all 
times. Now, we have a number of questions regarding the pony. Yes. Okay, so one question, you said that you have to have it at all times. Correct. And uh, Stephanie Brocker would like to know, if you get stopped by the police and you do not have a pony, what is the penalty? Oh, Stephanie, you do not want to be caught by the secret dental police without your federal pony identification pony. Uh, it will cause you nothing but heartache and grief. Um, number one, I can't imagine a person who would not want to have their pony with them at all times. Stephanie, I'm just saying, I, I'm not sure what kind of person you are, but if you're, the, me, I'll, you're I'll the kind of person who doesn't want it with you, um, you're obviously a rebel and uh, you would be dealt with harshly um, because obviously you are a speed bump in the road to a place where we don't need no roads no more. Um, the secret dental police will probably whisk you away to one of those secret uh, dental detention facilities. Uh, after you graduated from there, you would probably find yourself at a, uh, a, a dental re-education center and uh, hopefully that will uh, take care of the issue and uh, you, you will learn the joys of mandatory pony ownership. Thank you. Uh, Karen Allen would like to know, do the ponies come in different colors? Karen, of course they do. They, uh, that is, of course, a pony of a different color, and they come in all the colors of the rainbow. Uh, they come in various shapes and sizes. Um, yes. Now, a lot, a lot of people also want to know, can the pony be exchanged for something like a monkey or a pig? No! That was easy. Now, very popular question, though. Yes. How about a mini pony? Mini ponies? Oh, certainly. I mean, many people ask me, uh, Vermin, you're talking about a pony-based economy. Uh, are you actually talking about using ponies for literal means of exchange? And of course, uh, no. Not until we can make them really, really small, you know, to fit in little pony walls or something. So, so Kelly Ehrlich looks like you're going to be getting your, uh, your mini pony. Yeah, I mean, if we could make them that small, maybe you could carry them around in your, in your pockets and buy things with them. And, make change with them, but we, we, we're, we'll work out the details. Okay, okay, well, Kurt Andrich actually has a, has a very good question in, in regards to all the ponies that are gonna be, uh, everybody in America is going to be getting. Yeah. So, yeah. since all these ponies will be producing methane gas, it's going to contribute to climate change, how do you plan to, uh, to deal with that? Well, once again, it, it's a, a, there's a proof of concept out right here, right now. I mean, if you Google up, uh, if the experiment was on bovines, it was uh, done on cows, uh, but the scientists had actually produced these packs that the animals wore and they actually captured the methane. Uh, so I believe through, through uh, methane capture, uh, we'll be able to uh, prevent it from uh, being uh, wasted. Okay. Um, now, my buddy uh, Scott Phillips. Hey, Scott. He wants to know, do you like his profile picture? That has been his profile picture since before we said we were going to do the interview. Well, it looks just like me, and by golly, I, I think it is me. So, Scott Phillips, uh, you look just like me. Could be my twin. Could be. Could be. Very, very important question. Yes. Do you drink beer? Uh, occasionally, I will enjoy a, a malty beer beverage, yes. Would you Would you like a beer for the rest of this interview? Oh, sure, sure, why not? There's but, like Heineken. But, but we brought you a special one. Oh. We brought you Rickard's Red. Oh, beautiful. Reminds me of Yingling. Yeah, kind of, it's, but it's a little bit, a little bit heavier, a little bit darker than, than, uh, than Yingling. Mm -hmm. Now, and this question is not going to be followed up with the same, but what are your visions on legalizing marijuana. It, I'm not gonna ask if you wanna get high for the rest of the interview, but. Oh, it's too late for that. Uh. <laughs> um, legalization of marijuana? Hell yeah! How do you, how do you feel about uh, the Second Amendment? Right oh, to bear arms? Well, once again, of course, uh, I have to say that I've uh, become somewhat politic. Um, so I guess uh, that. You're, you're for the Second Amendment. I'm, I'm, I'm dabbling with it. I, I'm exercising it. I'm, uh, I appreciate the Constitution. It's there for a reason. Um, I suppose the uh, well-regulated militia it will be, of course, uh, a pony-based militia. Okay. Um, the, the right of the people to uh, uh, carry and bear ponies uh, must not be infringed. So uh, how do you plan to enforce the mandatory toothbrushing laws? Well, the mandatory toothbrushing laws would uh, mainly be enforced by the Department of Homeland Dental Security. Uh, the Federal uh, Bureau of Dental Inspection um, and the Central uh, Dental Intelligence Agency also. Um, the Secret Dental Police, uh, you might be able to expect uh, dental checkpoints every several hundred yards uh, as you're driving your pony or pony cart down the road. 
uh, whereby your uh, your own teeth and your pony's teeth would certainly be inspected. Uh, your matching lip to tattoos would be scanned to make sure that they do in fact match. Uh, there would also be uh, laser dental scanners uh, available at the supermarket checkouts uh, and uh, toll booths. Um, of course, the key, the computer dental chip implant would also go a long way towards uh, giving uh, daily readings of your dental health, as would the motion and moisture uh, detection system on uh, government-issued uh, toothpaste, uh, which includes uh, a uh, harmless yet addictive substance, which would uh, certainly uh, people keep people coming back for more. Uh, the utilization of uh, DNA gene splicing to create a race of winged monkeys to act as tooth fairy enforcers uh, would of course be a priority of the Supreme Administration. Uh, your dental health is very important to us. Now, this one's actually a pretty important question. My friend uh, Sarah Handegard, well, Sarah Weston now. Hey Sarah Weston, how are you doing? She would like to know, do you have a replacement job in your cabinet for the tooth fairy? once the mandatory toothbrushing comes in effect. Well, I believe that the tooth fairy would probably be drafted to be the tooth czar, if you will. Um, you know, of course, there's no short of the children. We're not going to be able to stop the, the shedding of uh, baby teeth, if you will. There's just, It's not feasible presently until we perhaps engineer it some other way. Um, so I don't think that the uh, Tooth Fairy will actually uh, be losing her job, or uh, so she still job. has job security. Uh, indeed, indeed. I... Now, do you do you prefer electric or manual toothbrushes? Um, call me a sucker if you will, um, but I am a old school manual toothbrusher. Uh, sometimes circles, sometimes up and down. How many times a day should you brush your teeth? Um, once again, I'm sort of old school. Uh, three times a day a after each meal, uh, in between meal snack. I think, but that's just me. I don't know if we can enforce it. You know, maybe we can only force uh, twice a day. Yep. I don't know. Now, is there a certain brand that you recommend? Uh, government issued. Gov uh, once okay. again, I believe will, will be the, the most. Because that, uh, that's going to have that the addicting source. Yes. Correct, right? Yes. Thank you. How long have you been growing your beard? Uh, this has been on my face probably some 35 years. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. This question comes from my friend Jason Blessing. Jason, will we receive extra tax credits for flossing? Well, once again, of course, the flossing uh, issue is very important. Uh, a lot of people will try and, uh, you know, uh, oh, Vermin, how come you're not, what's up with the flossing? Why aren't you pushing that? But, yeah, it would pass the House, but the Senate, it's not going to pass the Senate. So I don't believe enforced uh, flossing will really become the law anytime soon. I believe it's important. Uh, can we give tax credits for it? Yeah, sure, why the hell not? Thank you. There you go, Jason. Paper or plastic? Boxers. Perfect. Wh who would your vice president be? Um, I've got a short list, I've got a long list, um, I've got a medium list. Of course, uh, Jimmy McMillan was my uh, vice presidential uh, candidate in uh, 2012. I was also his. Uh, we had a reciprocity a mutual, agreement. A mutual agreement? We did indeed. I was the VP candidate for uh, Rent is Too Damn High. He was VP for Free Pony. It worked out really well. Now, you plan to fight ISIS by going yes. back in time. Yes. Uh, and of course, I'm specifically referring to the 80s hair band. I really don't like their music. Do you? So I will be going back in time, and I will be destroying ISIS, the the hair band from the '80s. I, I want to be very clear about that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm glad I was able to offer that clarification. Well, I just took care of a bunch of questions. But do you plan to drive a DeLorean back then? Um, I don't believe so. I believe it will be some sort of time traveling uh, pony. Okay. Um. Well, we'll just we'll skip that whole topic then. <laughs> that one's out the window. Uh, what do you? A pony powered DeLorean. There, would you kill baby Hitler? Hell yeah, I promised I would. Now, this I'm glad that Jeb Bush finally answered my email, quite frankly. I'm glad he finally answered my email. And he said he would go back and kill baby Hitler, but I say I will go back and kill baby Hitler. That is my promise to you with my bare hands. Ah, ah. Do you have a plan for homeless and jobless vets? Oh yes, uh, I mean, uh, all unemployed Americans will be conscripted into the Pony Poop Collection Corps of America. Uh, there will be zero unemployment under a uh, Supreme Administration. So er everybody, normal citizen, military vets, everybody, if, if you don't have a job, you will give them a job in the Pony Yes, poop. I mean, they will have a pony. Their, their pony will be their job. I mean, the upkeep of the pony and stuff. And if they don't have a stable uh, environment, so to speak, uh, they would be given one. Yes, indeed, sure. On the government dime. I don't care. <laughs> 
Can we go to a four-day work week? Oh, yes. Oh, completely and totally. It's a very important question from my, uh, from my friend, Mark Conti. Hey, Mark. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Whole bunch, but how many seashells could uh, she sell by the seashore? Fondue or fondant? I'm kind of fond at all, you know. Well, you know, kind of fond of Lou. Uh, actually, I think we're almost done. <clears throat> the lightning round. Woo! It's the hell of a lightning round. Wait, I got my hand on my buzzer here. Wait a minute, I've got it. I've got... Hold on. Ready? Uh, Amy Sherrod again wants to know when will she get her pony. <clears throat> Amy Sherrod, let me say this. When will you get your pony? Immediately. Ponies! 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 Parties! 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 Hey, hey, There's your ponies, Amy! Uh, you and Chuck Norris, who would win? Me! <laughs> now, you being in politics, uh, how do you feel about constantly being judged on your clothes. I'm gonna take a guess, you don't give a rat's ass. You know, I think one of the appealing things about my campaign is the serious number of fucks that I don't give, and that is definitely one of them. Thank you. I, I, I think we've come to the end of this interview. I it's wanna thank you. It's been a very fine interview. And uh, if you had 30 seconds, mm -hmm. yeah. give your final campaign pledge and speech to the American voters. Friends, it's later than you think. The time is now. If not what, where? If not why, who? I am the only candidate who wants to sit in your living room with my feet propped up on your furniture. If you must vote, why not the worst this election season? My name is Vermin Supreme. Vote Vermin Supreme 2016. Thank you. And I'm Tim Martini with Exploring the Obscure. Follow all of my adventures on Facebook and YouTube under Exploring the Obscure. You can follow me directly on Instagram and Twitter at Timmy Martini. Until next time, keep your bags packed, register to vote. Let's go exploring. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely.